it says neither one who is totally ignorant yes. nor one who knows it that is the truth is eligible to study this book only he who thinks with the quotes i am bound i must become free is entitled to study it now is there anyone whose mind does not cry out i am bound i want to become free it does everybody's mind is suffering and wherever there is suffering there is an associated call cry for liberation this suffering of the mind this feeling of hurt itself is the invitation of the divine you couldn't have felt bad you couldn't have suffered had there been no possibility of liberation from the suffering you suffer because suffering is not your nature had suffering been your nature you would not have suffered and if everybody is suffering then why is the wise sage creating distinctions he has made three categories he is saying there are some who say i already know there are some who say i do not know he are saying he is saying both of these are disqualified only the one who says i am suffering but i do not want to suffer he is the one who should read on he is the one who is qualified to come close to the scripture otherwise please continue with your daily chores go get busy in your daily life the divine is not yet calling you you have not yet been blessed or is that so is there anybody who has not been blessed if everybody as we claimed is suffering then everybody has been blessed without being blessed how would you have suffered in fact those who are blessed the most they suffer the most the common man hardly experiences his suffering what is it that i am calling as the experience of suffering all i mean is acknowledging the suffering you suffer but you suppress the suffering you suffer but you hide the suffering under pretty names you say no no this is not suffering this is duty you say no no this is not suffering this is care and concern and love you say no no this is not suffering this is my responsibility towards my community or religion or job that is where lies the the distinction kindly do not think that truth has made any distinctions grace shines equally upon all god does not discriminate man creates distinctions the ego divides so god is not saying that there is there are three kinds of people truth is one not even one but the mind is many and this manyness of the mind has been represented by the sage in three categories three kinds of minds three kinds of minds according to mind i get it not three kinds of minds according to some divine rule three kinds of minds one i am all right have you not met such people they are saying oh, but i am all right why do i need to read the scriptures but i am all right the sage is saying congratulations you are already all right <laughs> continue being all right continue being all right till the day you suddenly collapse have you not seen such people obese 140 kg and they are all right may i have another pizza with double cheese they are all right their fate is fatal 
<laughs> they suddenly collapse. Gone. Sudden death. Finished. And it is not only about sudden death either. The one who is 140 kilograms is suffering every moment. He can't bend. He can't walk. But his claim is, oh, I am all right. I do not need advice from a dietitian. I do not need a teacher. And of course, I don't need a guru. I don't need to read the scriptures. I do not need to look at my body. I do not need to understand how I am feeling. These are the people who are all right. And then there are others who say, I am not all right and I will continue to not be all right because not being all right is my destiny. They will say, see, Buddha said life is suffering. That was his first noble truth. When the Buddha has stamped this as a certainty, who am I to try for any liberation? So I am destined to suffer. The world runs like this. Why must I try anything special? They'll say, you know, even great men, they came and then they died and then there was no trace left. I am just a teeny weeny, ordinary, little lady. How can I be any different? Vashisht is saying, great. You too have come upon the truth. So you need no further education. But then there is a minuscule third category. These are people who say, you know sir, our situation. It is a little self-contradictory. On one hand, we have evidence, factual evidence of our suffering. The way we live, this whole world is the factual evidence of suffering. On the other hand, we have a mystical hope of liberation. The suffering is factual. The hope is transcendental. We do not know from where the hope comes. We do not even know what we are hoping for against a visible army of assailants. I have an invisible defense, but a defense I surely have. Against great suffering, I feel I have an intangible support, but supported I do feel. So I am suffering. But there is something within which tells me I must not suffer and I will not continue to suffer. The sage is saying, welcome. You surely are a mad bunch. And spirituality is only for such mad people who can enjoy paradoxes. Who have the great capacity to observe facts, yet who can live beyond facts as well. They have the eye to see and the honesty to acknowledge that life is suffering. And yet, they have the third mystical eye. To have a divine hope that this suffering can discontinue. You get it? It is only for such people that the sages speak. It is only for such people that the Upanishads were written. 